So how you guys doing? It's Luke Monger. This is going to be a part two to the Paragon Warlock. I'm actually going to wind up disassembling it. I just took this thing apart and it honestly doesn't quite work. It works similarly to the way I had suspected, but not quite on par. I just thought I'd throw it on film and do some correcting on some of the statements that I made initially about this knife. It doesn't quite work the same way that I had initially thought that I had stated it did in my previous video. See, it's here. This is actually already fully disassembled. The buttons themselves are just aluminum buttons. They're held on by two Torx head screws. I'm using a Torx 7 right now. It's a Torx 7 head. You can see in here, the way that this is, these are actually just milled out shafts, right? And they're it's a singular piece here. It's a singular milling on the body itself to that actual pivot section. I thought the pivot section was going to be a separate piece, and it's actually not. It's just two separate sections. There are those two little locking bars, right? You can see them at the top. I'd mentioned those in my other video, and they're actually, there's four of them. There's one on top and one on bottom. You can see the orientation of them there. So when you depress the button here, right, that actually depresses these little pins, right, which lifts the blade up, which actually lifts the blade out of its little casing here. You can see the actual lockup. Now, the lockup, while it's in the closed position, while it's actually in its little sheath here, you can see the tolerances to the actual outside of the sheath, but it's locked into position because this is the closed lockup, right? And when you open the blade and actually give it an engaged lockup, this is your open lockup. So your lockup is created by through the blade tang to the actual aluminum body here, right? And that's actually what gives you your, your lockup. So those little pins lift the blade actually up into position, right? So you depress those pin, press the buttons, pins lift it up, actually gives you motion to rotate there, right? And you can see that stop pin coming around in this track here and actually giving you your stop engagement and these little pins are just kind of sitting in there right I imagine these are some kind of hardened stainless steel I also wanted to give you a look at just the amount of uh, it's not necessarily a good thing because these weren't cleaned very well after machining there's a lot of machining debris on them you can see this is heat treated. This is actually a heat treated pin. You can see the annealing there from the actual heat treatment. So it's definitely a very high quality component here, even though it's, I mean, it's tiny. It's just a little piece of stainless steel, but even that, it is a heat treated piece of little stainless steel. You can see that marking there. It's also been flattened off. The engagement section to the blade itself is flat right it's not like a high polish but it's definitely flat there's no burrs there's no rounded off you can see the rounded section here is actually what's sitting up inside the body of the the knife itself so there's a lot of dust there's a lot of debris inside of this thing check it out look at that which was like the main reason i really wanted to disassemble it uh i really wanted to just know how it works and get a Get a really good cleaning in there. See if I can actually slick up the action at all. See that little pin? This is the spring. I was expecting a little coil spring. That's a really stout, hardcore spring. So I'm going to clean it up, get everything lubed up nice and, yeah, all ready to go, and then come back for reassembly. All right, got everything wiped down. I'm actually going to, I'm going to wash this thing off a little bit better and, uh, clean it out so I'm not actually going to be Loctiting it right now. I do suggest that you Loctite pretty much everything here. But what I'm going to do, let's throw these little pins in. I've been thinking about how to actually put this thing together. I honestly think it should go together pretty simply. Let's see. Those tracks, you can see the tolerances for those pins there. There's a little bit of motion in there. They move around a little bit, but that's pretty pretty tight there. I like that. On blade. How do I want to do this? Take this pin, stick them in the actual the other side here, right? Making sure that the flat section you can see there's a dark side and a light side. You may want to make sure that that light side, the part that hasn't been you know, that the annealing, the dark spot from the actual heat treatment has been removed. You can see that they've polished that. 
So that's the side that's got to sit up against the actual blade. Now I'm going to turn this around. And one of the things I said in my other video actually before I put this thing back together I want to state is that there might be some blade deformation from the actual contact to the inside of the sheath or to the inside of the body of the knife I guess and you can see here that there actually is no contact there so that was just wrong the deformation that was on the blade was something that came from the factory and I had just encouraged by not properly sharpening it I did actually sharpen it up and it got rid of it I had stropped it and so it yeah, that was just wrong. There is actually no contact. You can see a little bit of uh, wear right here. And that's from when the blade is actually closing because it does have, there is a little bit of engagement here. You can imagine, right? So this, the blade is sitting right there on that edge. And then this other side, the other side is clamshell is coming down onto your actual cutting edge, right? So it's pinching your cutting edge and that's going to force the blade in to actually close it, you know what I mean? And actually give you your closing. But with that, it's kind of like stropping both sides of your cutting edge with this aluminum frame. I mean, so that's not really going to give you any heavy, heavy deformation, but over time I can actually seeing that wear down your cutting edge just a bit, stropping it up on aluminum. That doesn't occur if you close the knife. If you get the knife all the way into the shut position like it is here and then close it, uh, that's not going to occur. So that really is just user error. Um, it's all on misuse kind of timing with the knife. You can kind of see how I just put that thing together here. What I'm going to do, use the off side. I do have the buttons. They're not marked out uh, front and back, but you see the I'm using this as my off side. I took the screws out of the side. That has the pocket clip because it's going to be my off side. Set those in. Tighten this up. I'll come back. I've got these screws tightened in. Not fully tightened down, but snug. And now you guys get to watch me struggle because I have a feeling that this, look at the size of that spring. That is a stout ass spring right there. And I have a feeling that it's probably going to be a bitch to get these screws back in properly. So. Maybe not. This might be easier than I had thought. Yeah. Bam. Ninja fingers. It's back together. Moment of truth. If I hold it the right hack. Nope, I screwed something up. Check it out. What's going on? Oh. I put it in backwards. Check that shit out. I don't even know how I did that. Yeah, it's not running right, but I'll figure it out. Redisassemble it, get it all back together. I put it in backwards. This knife is awesome. The pocket clip is adjustable for uh, left, right to left-handed carry, and it's completely unnecessary because you can just disassemble the knife, and <laughs> you can just disassemble the knife and set the whole blade up for left-hand carry if you want the presentation side. This knife is awesome. That's it. Hopefully, a little bit more understanding on it. Y'all have a good one.